This is a 55-year-old woman with a history of episodes of aphasia. So if we start looking at this EEG, of course we want to do our typical evaluation of her background activity first. So let's start by counting her background frequency. It looks like it's about 10 hertz. It's symmetric from the left to the right hemisphere in terms of the frequency and the amplitude. It looks like it has a nice frequency amplitude gradient. We see that um, that progression from low amplitude fast activity in the front of the head to higher amplitude slower activity in the back of the head. So it's well organized. And on this page we also see nice reactivity. The eyes are closed here, then they open, and we see attenuation of the background. And in the anterior regions here we can see the eye blinks. And lots of just horizontal jerky eye movements here. So her eyes are closed, but these are just little eye flutters. Even when people have their eyes closed, sometimes their eyeballs are still moving and it's hard for them to keep their eyes still. And so don't get those confused for slow waves. Those are eye movements. We don't really see uh, much in the electrode chain um, posterior. And so that tells you, you know, if this were a slow wave, you should see a field. You should see something here as well. And Again, her eyes are open. We don't see the background activity here. And then we see eye closure and reemergence of the posterior dominant rhythm. And now we have hyperventilation. And on this page, something stands out here. If we look um, in terms of the symmetry, in this area here, we see this activity that we're not seeing on the right. So we see a slow wave here. We see, looks like this delta wave with some alpha rhythm superimposed. And we see that also here. And up in this area also in the parasagittal chain, we also see some delta activity and maybe a little, looks like a possible little spike or sharp wave there. So we'll just keep an eye on that area and see if that develops into anything. And here we see it again. And here it looks like more clear that we see a phase reversal here, meaning the two waves are pointing at each other. And then we see a slow wave after it. And we see that in all four electrode chains, meaning it has a field. It's not just occurring in one or two electrodes. Um, it has a wide area of um, involvement now, when we talk about the phase reversal, we're saying that these two waves point at each other, and that tells us the area of maximum negativity, or where the source is of this activity. An EEG convention, a wave pointing down is positive, and a wave pointing up is negative. It's the opposite of what you would think. So in this electrode chain, FP1 minus F7, the wave is pointing down. That means it's positive. So FP1 minus F7 is positive. In this chain, this wave is pointing up, it's negative. So F7 minus T3 is negative. Now we need to find out which electrode out of those three electrodes, FP1, F7, or T3, is negative. This is sort of like a mathematical puzzle, but it's actually pretty simple. So FP1 minus F7 is positive. So that means F7 has to be negative because a positive minus a negative is a positive and a positive. And similarly, F7 minus T3 is negative. So this must be more negative. F7 must be more negative than T3 if the overall sum is negative. So F7 is negative. When you see a phase reversal or the two waves pointing at each other, the area of highest negativity or the source is always the electrode that they have in common and I just wanted to go through that with you so you understand why. Now every wave that points at each other is not necessarily significant. You know we see phase reversals all the time. There's electrodes uh, or uh, these waves are pointing at each other here and there all the time. 
This is different because it stands out from the background, it's higher amplitude, it's followed by a slow wave, and it's, it has a field, so we see it in, in more than two electrodes. The morphology of the sharp activity is also important, and we will talk about that a little bit more later. So as we progress forward, we see that there are still lots of eye movements, and again, another um, slow wave here, and maybe with a little sharp component before it, this may be a little phase reversal here, it's just not very impressive. We can change the montage here to see if we see it better. So this is a Laplacian montage, and it's like a kind of um, blunt looking sharp wave with a slow wave after it in F7, which is anterior temporal. Oops, I just changed that a little bit, so let's go back to the montage we were, we were in. And this is post-hyperventilation. So it looks normal here. And we're keeping a close eye on that left temporal chain. And we don't want to forget to look at the right temporal chain. Just because you see an abnormality in one area, don't forget to look elsewhere because you could miss you know, other abnormalities if you're not keeping a close eye on the whole EEG. Here's another, um, looks like a blunt, sharp wave with a slow wave after it. And let's change the montage again to a referential to see where the highest amplitude is. So it looks like, you know, anterior mid-temporal region is where we're seeing that activity. And progressing forward here, it looks like there's a little bit of asymmetry with some delta activity here that we don't see over here. It's subtle, but it's there. And lots of eye movements. This is a little asymmetric. This is interesting. Looks like maybe a little bit faster here, a little bit of a faster activity. And with some superimposed slow waves. And the amplitudes look a little bit higher here than they do on the right. We should just double check this in a referential montage to see if it's a true amplitude difference. It does look like it is higher amplitude on the left here compared to on the right. It's unclear why that would be. This patient may have a skull defect there, which could explain that, but usually with a breach rhythm we see um, an asymmetry that's more consistent and not just a burst of asymmetric activity like that. Here again, we see some slow waves in the right temporal area and also in the right parasagittal region, more in the posterior, with a little sharp component. So, so far this patient has been awake and drowsy, but no sleep yet. And this is some, this is interesting activity. We see this rhythmical activity here that is increasing in amplitude a little bit, it's decreasing in frequency, and then it ends. So this is, if this were longer, we could say that that is an electrographic seizure, but this is really short. So we could say that's a brief rhythmical discharge or a BRD. So it's rhythmical activity that is evolving in morphology and in frequency that just ceases abruptly and more slowing there on the left. Again, um, a spike with a slow wave after it at F7. Um, similar activity there. And now the patient's eyes were open and closed again. Now we're doing photic stimulation and we can see she's got a lot of blinks with the flash and she does have a photic driving response. We're not seeing a photoparoxysmal response here. There's no epileptiform activity coming out with the flash, and we wouldn't really expect to see epileptiform activity coming out with the flash in a focal, focal epilepsy. So this is an abnormal EEG in the awake and drowsy states due to the presence of, now she had a few abnormalities. She had 
focal slowing in the left temporal region, and I would describe that as intermittent uh, mixed frequency, so it's both theta and delta slowing that was arrhythmic, and, and again it was intermittent, and it occasionally had sharp components. She also had left anterior and mid-temporal epileptiform sharp waves, and one brief rhythmical discharge in the left temporal region lasting, I think it was three seconds, but I would have to go back to check, to double check that. So these findings are consistent with number one, the epileptiform activity and brief rhythmical discharge are consistent with an area of cortical irritability and potential seizure focus emanating from this region. And the focal slowing is consistent with focal subcortical dysfunction in this region.